In this video, we'll look at finding and choosing a color palette, adding those colors to a Figma design system, and expanding the range of colors available to you by using tints and shades. And I'll throw in a top tip at the end for you, so hang around for that one. Imagine this. You've put together some awesome wireframes and layouts. Everyone's happy. Now you have to start adding the shiny stuff, the wallpaper, the bits that everyone loves in the final design. But what visual direction are you going to take it in? Have you decided the look and feel you're after? I mean, you could just start whacking any old colour in and hope for the best. You might get lucky. It might work. But there's a good chance that it probably won't. There are many ways to create a new colour palette. You can delve deep into colour theory, but if you're short on time and just want to get stuck in and play, I would recommend a couple of great tools to help you get started. The first of these is called Coolers. Coolers. Whatever it is, head on over to coolers.co and check out their colour palette generator. You can cycle through as many options as you want. You'll notice numbers across the bottom here. These are called hex values, which are super useful when you start putting these together in Figma and super important when you start handing work over to a developer to build. Another option you have if you're a bit more into the color theory side of things is Adobe Color. Head on over to color.adobe.com. You can play with color harmony rules and really dial in those colors. So now you've decided on a color palette you're happy with, the fun can really start. I've decided on this color palette. I've grabbed a screenshot and I'll dump this over into Figma. So now I have my palette. I'm in my design system on the colors page. If you need help setting up your first design system, check out my other video on how to do that in the description. First thing I want to do is set up a layout so I can categorize the new colors. I have four colors in total and I know I'm going to eventually want various shades of each. So firstly, let's create the main colors. I'll stick a rectangle here, a name for the color and the hex value I mentioned before. Let's copy the hex value for my primary color and change the rectangle to match. I'll update the name and change the hex value too. So let's do this for the other colors now and I'll skip ahead. So we have all the colors in, but we're not quite done yet. You'll want to have a think about how you'll categorize these colors. If you're naming conventions a week, then finding the colors when you need them is going to be tricky. I'm going to set mine up with three main categories, primary, secondary, and monochrome. So back in Figma, click on the create style icon over here. Then we'll click the plus button. We want this to be our primary color. So we'll start with primary forward slash, then the name of the color, which is Carolina blue forward slash, then the shade, which is base. Click create style and done. Right, let's set up the rest of them. Let's select the light sea green one, head over to the create style button and call this one secondary forward slash light sea green forward slash base. Right, I'll continue to work through these. Sweet, so you should now have four color styles set up. I've added some hex values and labels into these colors so they're easier to navigate for me, other designers, and potentially developers who might work on my project. So the next step is to add some tints and shades to these colors. It gives us a bit of flexibility and variety. These are basically lighter or darker versions of your main colors, which lets you control the intensity. You can use these intensities to guide users to focus on a particular area. The higher the intensity of the color, the more it draws the user's attention. Figma has a huge plugin library. Plugins are a great way to add specific functionality to your Figma setup. To create our tints and shades, I'm going to add a color generator plugin called Color Scale Generator. Click this button here and search for Color Scale Generator. There it is, so open this up. Now select your main color you want to generate a scale for. Choose how many you'd like. I'll go with 10 to give me some options and hit Create. You can see the plugin creates a selection of colors, both darker and lighter for you. It also gives you the hex values, so we can add them to our palette. Copy over the colors using the hex values we have, like we did before. Now we need to loop back and start creating styles for all the new tints and shades we set up. I'll whiz through this now. So you can see in the color style selector, we now have all the colors available, and they've been categorized into primary, secondary, and monochrome. Congratulations, you've just set up your color palette. And the final step is just publishing your colors with your design system. So for those of you who managed to make it this far in the video, I promised a top tip. One thing to consider when working with digital colors is how they're going to be used. For example, I know my primary and secondary colors will probably get used for buttons, but will they be accessible? By accessible, I mean someone with sight impairment. So whether that be color blindness or short sightedness. With the colors you've chosen, will there be enough contrast between the text color and the button background color. One way to check if your colors are solid is to run an accessibility checker. It just so happens there's a nifty plugin for that too. So let's jump back into Figma quickly. Head on over to the plugins button and search for Able. So the way this plugin works, I've created a button and then I've split that button 
into the text that's on it and the background color. I select those two layers and boom, it tells me whether that color is accessible or not. You may have to tweak the color tints and shades slightly to hit full accessibility. And that's it. I hope you found this video useful. You now know how to find a color palette, choose a color palette, implement it into a Figma design system, and remember to always consider accessibility when choosing your colors. If you found this video useful, please like, subscribe, or drop a comment below. Oh, and hit the bell icon too if you'd like to be alerted every time I release a new video. Until next time, keep on learning.